Right, um, I don't know how I got to be the ninth person <laughs> in a session and just before lunch, but I'm Sarah Wadsworth, I'm the clinical lead for obstetrics at Counties, and I'm going to talk to you briefly about iron deficiency anemia, as I'm sure most of you know quite a bit about it. So, um, definitions quickly, in pregnancy, anemia in the first trimester is a haemoglobin under 110, less than 105 in the second and third trimester, and less than 100 postpartum. Iron deficiency um, of serum ferritin, less than 15 is iron deficient, and less than 30 is iron depletion and also requires treatment in pregnancy. And these are numbers from the British Committee for Standards and Haematology, who have written a lovely guideline about iron and iron deficiency anemia as well. Um, why do we worry about it, or why do I worry about it? It's the most common cause of anemia in pregnancy, as I'm sure you're well aware, and worldwide, it affects 50% of the pregnant population, mainly in developing countries. But a lot of those risk factors for anemia in pregnancy that you see in developing countries, we also see in our county's population. An inadequate dietary intake, and that's not difficult to, what well, is difficult to maintain that, as I'll talk about later. Um, being iron deficient pre-pregnancy, having small spacings between your babies, and having a lot of babies are all risk factors for being iron deficient. Um, we know that in New Zealand you've got a higher chance of being iron deficient or iron deficient, having iron deficiency anemia if you're Maori, Pacific or of Indian ethnicity, and that's over 75% of our county's population. Um, we don't have great numbers for what our, our anemia numbers are at Middlemore, but we did do an audit a couple of years ago, and at booking we had a third of women who were either um, anemic with a haemoglobin of less than 110 or iron deficient with, in those days, we used a ferritin of 12 as our cutoff with their first antenatal bloods. Um, and Sue's talked a little bit about the clinical indicators from the Ministry of Health, and we are an outlier in the rest of the country as far as blood transfusions are concerned as well. So that's, you know, we're giving more blood transfusions than we need to, and perhaps we could be reducing those by managing our women a little better in their pregnancies. Um, Quickly, the impacts of iron deficiency for mums and babies. Basically, it makes reduce the performance and immunity for mums. And although babies are well, relatively well protected in that they take all the iron that mum can give them, um, they're still at risk of being um, premature, of having a low birth weight, and of being insulin uh, iron deficient by three months of age. And that goes on into childhood as well. And our paediatric colleagues are well aware of the iron deficiency that's noticed in, in the patients admitted to the, to the kids first. Um, so what is an adequate intake? Most of you will know that it's quite a lot of iron. Um, 30 to 60 milligrams of iron, elemental iron just to maintain an adequate iron level when you're not iron deficient. And that, if you look at this, would be um, 300 grams of cooked liver per day or a kilo of cooked beef. So it's a pretty tall order. Um, <laughs> And quite hard to, to, really, to really reach. So um, that's the sort of the background to what we've been doing over the last couple of years um, in women's health to try and just increase a baseline like recognition, um, knowledge about iron and how to test it, how to treat it, etc., to try and um, reduce those poor outcomes at the end of the pregnancy. So we've had, it's sort of called an anemia project. Um, we've had everybody involved from the midwives, obstetricians, dietitians, primary health. Our quality and safety program has supported it as well. And it's been a multidisciplinary, multi-stranded kind of approach um, with education, resources, and a new guideline. Sorry, I'm talking very fast because I know it's lunchtime coming. <laughs> Um, but it's all about the ferritin, really, and we've had two different people say that they test the ferritin or don't test. I notice that the health pathways don't talk directly about checking a ferritin with booking bloods. They do. I didn't see it there. <laughs> um, but, okay, brilliant. We never used to, and more and more it's so important to do it with your booking bloods. We did a full, full blood count but never did a ferritin. Um, we've added it into our list of the first antenatal bloods on our county's blood forms. We tried to get it onto the lab test form, but they wouldn't add it in that because it's a regional form. Um, so 
when you're ticking that form for the first antenatal bloods, just add the ferritin as well, and that can um, give us an indication of where a woman is at at the very beginning of the pregnancy. So we've written a guideline which also includes treat, uh, management for maintenance iron or treatment doses if required, and has a lot about it of a, a dietary advice um, because it's quite a difficult medication to take, as I'm sure you're aware. Um, tea or coffee will reduce the absorption. Having them with your meals will reduce your absorption of the iron that's in your meals, and having a cup of coffee with your iron tablet is not a good idea either, whereas vitamin C is very good at helping you absorb it. Um, on the guideline that we've written, we've got a lovely table. This is just a little bit of it about the, this, all, of the, all of the supplements and written by one of our pharmacists. The brand name, how much iron's um, in it, what the elemental iron is, how subsidised it is, and your maintenance or your treatment doses. And that's gone through all of, this, all of the subsidised doses um, so that you've got the options there, including the, the ferret and the liquid iron if people are having trouble with the tablets. Um, so the take-home message is checking your ferritin with your booking bloods, um, starting to treat, so if they're less than 30 with their ferritin, and that's probably most of our population, then starting them on a maintenance dose or, or doubling that with a treatment dose, explaining how to take the, the medication, and then repeating your blood tests so that we know that we're getting um, the ferritin levels up. Um, part of our project was also uh, one of our new grad midwives, Bryony Raven, who's actually left counties now, has moved down to Palmerston North, where she could afford to buy a house. Um, <laughs> put a lot of work into uh, making a flip chart, that, um, this beautiful flip chart with some very culturally sensitive pictures which took a lot of work, <laughs> with very simple messages on one side for the women, while on the back is the more detailed discussion points for the midwives or the doctors, prescribing the iron, talking about your diet, talking about how to take your tablets, and um, simple messages about breastfeeding, about chances of birthing and where you want to, if you want to birth in a primary unit, you know, reasons to take your iron. So that's really good and also comes with a lovely fridge magnet, magnet which you might have seen in some of our antenatal packs, um, just with those simple messages once more to remind families about what's important with the diet. Um, so a quick word about Ferinject or intravenous iron, which um, you might have some experience with. So prior to um, the introduction of Ferinject, which was put onto the hospital medicines list in 2015, we were using other intravenous um, iron, which was far more time consuming and most pregnant women would, would get some sort of reaction to if once we started to give it to them. So the Ferinject has been a, a really fantastic addition to the whole of the, treat, the iron deficient picture. But it is expensive, I think $300 for one vial, and most women are needing two vials. Um, with great enthusiasm, we started to give, give it through a day assessment clinic at the hospital. And um, we've been able to put that out to POEC. I don't know if any of you have been aware of it or have used it, but it's um, um, since the 1st of July, referrals still come to Middlemore, and if women meet the criteria, which includes having tried oral iron and been um, unsuccessful with incre increasing their haemoglobins or their ferritins with a decent try of oral iron, um, then we're able to recommend the, the, ferritin, uh, the ferringic from POAC. And that's a fantastic um, treatment to have, and we're giving it a lot for postnatal women before they go home to help with... Um, just surviving in their first few weeks after having a baby. So that's that. So next steps, we're looking with the Maternity Quality and Safety Programme at funding options for oral iron for the woman who still can't really manage the $5 prescription fee for even taking the oral iron or iodine. We want to audit our booking blood to make sure that we're getting those done and, and that people are being treated and we'll continue to review our blood transfusion regimens. Thank you.